Hi Aries, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your July 2024 Astrology. Let's, let's do something different with you Aries. Let's start with your ruler Mars. Mars is going to conjunct Uranus. Uh, been looking forward to that. I think a lot of astrologers have been looking forward to that. Always very interesting to see what happens when Uranus gets triggered. Mars arrives in your second house on the 9th, stays there for about six weeks, is going to conjunct Uranus from the 12th to the 19th, so that's a week, but exact on the 15th, I call this rebel meets warrior. Um, this is your second house of income, your wealth, money you make, money you save, it's your resources, uh, your valuables. Uranus is all about breaking free, breaking away, even breakdowns and breakthroughs. It is sudden insight. It's really innovative ideas and thinking outside the box. Uranus has been moving through your second house for 2018, 2024, about six years, but be about seven, eight years by the time he's done in 2025, 2026. Um, in the sign of Taurus, related to the second house. So, you know, we're really talking money, house, wealth, income. Mars, your ruler, of course, very dynamic, very headstrong, doesn't let too much uh, stand in his way. When these two conjunct, it can be really, really explosive energy. It can be a sudden insight on how to make more money or save more money, really out of the blue, something you never thought of before. Sometimes it comes on the heels of something disruptive. Uh, Uranus is often called the great disruptor, but inevitably provides a solution and allows us to evolve because you know that is Uranus's goal. We have to evolve, we have to break out of structure, that's become too restrictive, um, that has us perhaps in a rut. We're not, you know, learning anything new or, you know, moving on and moving up. So, and a lot of stability. Taurus is fixed Earth, so the most stable probably of all the signs. So despite everything, in terms of income, you probably don't like very many disruptions. And maybe you are in a situation that nothing is changing, right? You're only able to save a certain amount or not able to save anything at all. Or, you know, your income has been pretty fixed. You know, there's not too much change on that horizon. But this is going to disrupt something and give you insight. As I said, it can come through also a breakdown of some sort. I don't want to, I don't do scary astrology. You know, I don't want to tell you uh, this is going to be terrible and you're going to be without income, but it can be a bit of a reversal that is going to force you to do something else and ultimately is going to lead to a better situation. If there's been a situation that has been, um, you know, really not sitting with you, you know, I, I put, you know, if the pot has been simmering on the back burner, now the lid is going to fly off. But if it's been something that has just sort of been, you know, an irritant for a long time, you might address it. I'm getting the feeling, you know, uh, especially with Mars there, this is going to be very much for all of us. Um, a self-initiated change, you know, as something is going to come up on the horizon, as I said, with Uranus quite suddenly, and we're really, really going to act on it because Mars is definitely, you know, the energy to pursue it intensely and the confidence in the assertiveness to do so. So it might seem like something, you know, new and sudden and that you've never thought of before, but then you're going to go ahead with it. Or as I said, sometimes the change comes from outside of us in a very sudden and disruptive way. And the, um, Probably worst thing to do when that happens is to, you know, really, really cling to things. And in Taurus, there's a tendency to cling to the way of doing things. But Uranus is going to push us forward almost no matter what, I should say. But, you know, definitely. I'm really interested to see how this is going to play out for all of us. Now, Mercury arrived in Leo on the 2nd, Venus on the 11th. This is your fifth house of romance, sex, creativity, uh, everything to do with children adoption, uh, pregnancy, your children or uh, someone else's children that you are close to. So, you know, godchildren or stepchildren, for example, anything we do for fun. So uh, entertainment, you know, if that's going to watch a hockey game, if that's going to the movies, um, you know, if that's going for a hike, for example, it is romantic partners. I think I mentioned it's creativity as well. Planets arriving in Leo are going to oppose Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto is sitting at the first degrees of Aquarius. Remember, it hasn't made it past two degrees since 2023 and is now retrograde. 
So Mercury does this the 2nd and the 3rd. Venus does this from the 11th to the 14th. Mercury might have you thinking about something very intensely in terms of a romance, in terms of a creative pursuit, something to do with children. Remember, Pluto is all about power and control, is about the shadow side, about what isn't working. So as much as Mercury likes to examine options and is pretty curious, this might be a two days where you're really, really looking at something in terms of where you know you have control and where it's given away this is very much the fifth our individual self-expression the 11th house is groups we belong to organizations so there's an idea of conformity there be it written or unwritten you know maybe the the organization has specific rules or there's that kind of you know unwritten rules of the social circle this is also our long-term goals as well so there might be a play here back and forth between you know what your long-term goals are uh, what your long-term goals are you know what a creative pursuit is or what you know long-term goal is in terms of a romantic pursuit Venus will do the same thing, as I said, from the 11th to the 14th, but more through the lens of relationships. So, you know, what are the power uh, plays or dynamics in terms of relationships with children, in terms of relationships with a romantic partner? Venus also relates to beauty and creativity. So you could be exploring that as well. You know, are you uh, expressing yourself creatively as much as you want to or in the way you want to. Because Pluto does show us these power dynamics and what isn't working, Pluto's ultimate goal is for us to transform. Um, it shows us the shadow side. So if there's been, you know, a long-standing resentment or a long-lying resentment or something that just, you know, isn't sitting right with you, this is an excellent time to work through it. It's almost as if it's going to, you know, bubble up to the surface and has to be addressed. And Interesting because, you know, Mercury is probably going to have, you know, sort of thinking about that, not a long aspect, but then Venus comes along, it lasts a little longer, and we're really looking at the power plays and the power struggles. The sun is sitting in your fourth house of home and family, so this is family of origin, family of choice. It is also the physical place you live, so the area as much as the structure, if I can put it that way, that you live in. The sun, of course, you know, your yearly check-in, focus on that. You know, is there something to be addressed literally in your house or your flat? Um, is there something, you know, uh, that needs to be modified in terms of family dynamics? There's a new moon there on the 5th. New moons mark a new beginning, a good time for a resolution, like a New Year's resolution. So if there's something you want to do differently, you know, if there's some new way of approaching, you know, a family dynamic or something you want to change up in terms of a family dynamic, a new habit of some sort, new moon there in the fourth house is a really, really good time to do so. The sun is going to trine Neptune in fellow water sign Pisces from the, let me look at my notes, 19th to the 22nd, exact on the 21st. Very dreamy energy. Uh, Neptune has been sitting in Pisces where he is very strong as the modern ruler in your 12th house. This is very much our hidden self, our inner self, you know, our subconscious patterns as well, where we go when we want to get quiet and explore, I guess, what we really feel on the inside, where we tap into, you know, the collective unconscious, just that idea of, you know, really feeling our way intuitively through things. This can be perhaps insight, you know, this could be a creative solution that comes to you out of nowhere. You know, maybe there's a long-standing issue in terms of a family matter and suddenly, you know, Neptune is going to give you uh, insight and it's going to relate to maybe how you really feel on the inside, you know, deep down inside and um, what is going on in fourth house matters. The fourth house also covers, you know, family traditions, right? The way things are done, the way things uh, aren't done in this family. Something that we do carry with us, um, sometimes they're imprinted on us, you know, at a very young age and, you know, they become sort of a blueprint that we carry on the subconscious level. So maybe, you know, you're going to have insight into that and say, you know what, I just, I just don't really want to, you know, do that like that anymore, right? The sun is the self. So maybe, you know, I'm just not about doing things this way or, you know, being a certain way. Neptune brings confusion and blur at the same time. So, you know, it could result in you seeing things better than what they are. Neptune very much the rose-colored glasses. A lot of idealism with Neptune, a lot of uh, compassion. Neptune also relates to spirituality and religion. So maybe, you know, you are going to review your beliefs or turn to uh, your beliefs to uh, solve something here. 
or to guide you. At the same time, um, it could be deceptive. You know, maybe there is someone trying to deceive you, especially during this uh, trying period. Maybe it is that things are confused and they are deceptive. So I think it's a question of during that aspect of, you know, feeling our way through things, seeing how we feel, seeing how, you know, intuitively uh, things are coming onto our radar. And at the same time, waiting until the energy is passed and seeing, you know, how we want to act on it. Very interesting with Neptune, you know, as much as he um, brings in answers and can really get us in touch with ourselves, sometimes things aren't clear. So hence the idea of, you know, um, I'd be the first person to say, you know, do rely on your intuition. But while the aspect is happening, there can be some confusion going on as well. And it's often sometimes, you know, you'll feel something is going on, but you don't know exactly what it's not clear. And then as we wait, we say, oh, yeah, it's, it's as if we're on a dark path, if I can use this analogy, you know, with a flashlight and we can't see super far down the road. We don't know in a culminating sense what it's about, but we're like, oh, something's going on here. You know, let me let me go and explore the clues step by step. And suddenly, you know, it does become clear. So after all that <laughs> interesting spiel. I wanted to add when this is exact on the 21st, by then the moon will have swung around to your 10th house of where you seek success. Remember, it's public success. So it can be climbing the corporate ladder, but it can be also another area where you're seeking awards, achievements, something like that. Where there's a marker, it's also people above you on that ladder. So people in authority or government authority or even a parental authority, interestingly, because we we're talking about um, family traditions and that isn't uh, haphazard. <laughs> This does relate, uh, especially in the natal chart. New moon at the last degree of Capricorn on the 21st, uh, sorry, full moon was full last month, also on the 21st at the first degree of Capricorn. So maybe the same story repeating, finding balance between where we're seeking success and home and family. Maybe something does have to be settled up here to give you the ability to uh, pursue or complete something here as well often marks perhaps an ending or highlights something that is going on here as well. Then by the 22nd, the sun moves into your fifth house. Um, I keep saying in the other videos, you know, whatever came up in terms of the fifth house, not going to be able to escape it because then the conversation is going to continue in an even bigger way with the sun there, right? The sun is a great big spotlight and really relates to self. So again, from the 22nd to the 25th, now the sun is going to be opposing Pluto and very much our individuality, who we are, our personality, you know, with the sun opposed to, you know, 11th house, that idea of conformity, power issues again in terms of relationships, in terms of relationships with children, our creative pursuits. So it's there's really a focus here for you this month, Aries, on you know, what you want to pursue, what you want to do, how much power you are giving yourself or is being given you, what has to transform. Also, you know, perhaps things need to change up. It doesn't mean necessarily people get worried when we talk about this and think, oh, I have to cut somebody out of my life, right? That the romantic partner has to go or the, um, you know, the, the relationship with the child has to be phenomenally modified. And I'm thinking more of adult children when I say this, you know, like, but Sometimes it's really transmuting and transforming with Pluto in terms of how we approach things or our outlook or, you know, giving ourselves power by, dare I say, you know, not giving ourselves so much responsibility to have to do everything. I, I don't know if that sounds clear. Maybe I'm channeling Neptune and becoming foggy myself, but, you know, the letting go a little bit, letting go and, um, not feeling so powerless. So sometimes it, it has to transmute in that way. You know, sometimes we have to change something up. Maybe we have to change something up in terms of a relationship with that person. You know, it could be even relationship to um, our creative approach. And just quick reminder, Neptune stations retrograde on the second. Pluto has been retrograde for a few months. Uh, Saturn since the end of June, I believe. Uranus is going to be next. I want to say Uranus is on deck sometime in August. So slowly as we head into the fall, the energy is going to be slowing down. And I'm going to forget again, 
Speaking of retrogrades, Mercury is going to slip into pre-retrograde shadow on the 17th as well. So uh, communications are going to be confused or can get mixed up, especially again with romantic partners and children. So just make sure that's clear. The retrograde itself is in August. In fellow fire sign Leo, the Mercury retrogrades are in fire signs this year. So, you know, do know that already. There's going to be certain confusion. Mercury also relates to commerce. So if there's something... Um, Commercial agreement, let's say you have a creative pursuit of some sort and you're signing a, um, a contract or an agreement, you know, uh, to perform or to show your work or something, you know, do make sure you double check and triple check that as well. And until Mercury is out of post retrograde shadow sometime in September, things do have time to change up. It'll take place between um, Virgo and Leo, this particular Mercury retrograde, but we'll talk about that more next month. So lovely Aries, that is everything I wanted to tell you for July. Have a wonderful month. Let me know how this worked out, this um, Mars-Uranus conjunction, Mars your ruler. You know, drop back in and drop me a comment and let me know what whatever else resonates with you or how this is playing out for you personally. Take care and I will see you in the next one.